Hello and welcome to Coffee with Carrie. Hmm, thank you for stopping by today. See what's on the agenda. I'm sure again you saw the title. It's never a surprise to you because I film and then I think of the title and I don't usually know what it is when I sit down here, but obviously that's what maybe lured you here. I don't know. If you're new here, I'm Carrie. I'm a matchmaker, a dating coach, and I have this channel here. We talk about relationships and dating. So that's what I know about. That's what I talk about. Today, this is about the two different ways that chemistry comes about in the early stages of dating. And I think a lot of people get confused because they imagine that it only comes one way, but I have years of experience that has shown me that there's more than one way to, not skin a cat, more than one way to find your way to great romantic chemistry. If that's at all interesting, I hope you'll stick around. That's what's on the agenda. Sure, there's love at first sight, maybe. You can see somebody and be wowed, immediate attraction. That is a first impression. You'll often hear me saying to clients, when do you think you know if there's attraction? I ask that during our welcome meetings. Sometimes they say, I know right away, and I have to have them clarify. Does that mean you know right away within 30 seconds? Does that mean you know right away after an hour of hanging out with this person? Some people say right away and they mean they know within the first four days. So that means different things to different people. But I remember once thinking back to one of my very early clients years ago, and she was very attracted to this fella I sent her out with. And I said, she goes, oh my gosh, the attraction was like palpable. He was so attractive. I didn't hear a word he said. <laughs> And I'm like, that's not my goal. First of all, it's not my goal to have people not communicating and enjoying themselves and sharing stories, et cetera, learning a little bit about one another. But also, I'm not aiming for a relationship where it starts out super red hot, passionate attraction, because where do you go from there? Sometimes that's a big distraction to keep you from truly developing a foundation that would give you a long-term relationship to build from that. Building upon an immediate attraction sometimes doesn't have quite the stability that you get when you start the other way and it takes a little time to figure out whether this truly is attraction or you just kind of think they're cool or cute or smart. Those things can kind of come in different orders. So you don't want to be like that client and be on a date and let the chemistry overpower everything and keep you from actually being present on the date, but that's certainly one way that chemistry does come about where it's just immediate and overpowering. Some of the matchmakers say that they prefer it to have a slow burn, right? Not like flipping on a light switch, but like a sizzle that builds over time into a great chemistry. Some people believe that can't happen. I know that is not true. I've seen it with clients. I've seen that in my own life. Think about people who meet at work and begin a relationship. It's not like they were working together for you know six months and were just avoiding each other because they were so attracted to one another. Sometimes those relationships work relationships where they're coworkers or friends and it becomes something romantic. Those relationships start with a friendship and not necessarily even noticing that the other person might be a romantic interest. But sometimes it happens that these people start looking forward to seeing each other. They are appreciating the other person's sense of humor or how smart this person is. Suddenly they're looking forward to going to work. They're putting a little effort into the way they look at work, bringing their best attitude and working up the courage maybe to move this from a work colleague situation into asking this person on a date. That type of relationship typically pretty strong foundation. They knew this person first without having the distraction of the physical chemistry, maybe blinding them to who this person truly was. They know the personality before the attraction kicks in. So that's definitely another way that people find that chemistry works for them in their relationship. Another matchmaker said that she's aiming for a friendship that catches fire. She thinks that leads to the best relationships. A little spark, a little zing, a little something there that you want to explore, but not being absolutely sure. And those are the reasons that with clients, I encourage them, if you're not sure about attraction, if you're on the fence, uh, it wasn't like obvious to me that I had an attraction. 
Well, that's fine. You don't have to know on a first date. That's not the reason to say no to a second date. That's the reason to go on a second date and see in which direction that's going, whether you're like, oh, no, that's definitely not going to be, <laughs> or whether it's like, oh, I'm still, I'm a little bit more intrigued than I was last time. She or he looked kind of cute doing this, and I felt we were connecting in this kind of cool way. Learning more is the key. And also, my tip that I'm always sharing, you may have heard it before, is that I don't believe you should do a repeat of your first date for your second date if you're on the fence about chemistry. I hope that people would think to go do something different, maybe something a little more physical, see this person in their element in a whole nother set of surroundings where you can kind of gauge how they maneuver in the world, their confidence out there, their way they uh, handle different situations. That's more likely to spark that chemistry than first date part B, and it's like very redundant to what you had learned the first time around. And again, I will give you my three reasons to not go on a second date if you're not feeling it. That would be red flags, too many of them, right? We've done an episode on how many red flags basically till you are ready to walk away. More red flags than you would think according to that study. I'll link to that episode at the end of this one. But uh, red flags, deal breakers, straight up deal breakers. That is not going to work for me. Your opinions on this are wacko to me. <laughs> Our values are completely unaligned or you sound so extreme in your views about this or that, or you do something that does not work for my lifestyle. Those types of deal breakers, those come up on a first date. There's no reason to drag this out and or be lured in by great chemistry when you know that it's not really a great match based on your interests or values. And then third, if you have a feeling about somebody that ugh, there's no chance that you're ever going to want to kiss this person or make out with them, a feeling of ugh is really, really hard to come back from and then be attracted to this person. So if you feel either that or the red flags deal breakers, that's a legitimate reason to not follow through and try to figure out if this could grow or develop into something that you would want to pursue. That's the different ways that people come into chemistry, figuring out attraction. And you would be amazed at how many people I have sent on dates who said, mm, yeah, I really didn't feel that we have an attraction. And I was like, go again, go one more time. And it worked out just swimmingly that indeed they did find their way to attraction. Sometimes it takes a while. You have to see this person in a different light or different circumstances and suddenly, bammo, that happens. So appreciate you being here today. If you enjoyed it, please do what my little mom is recommending, which is give the episode a thumbs up. I hope you'll subscribe and uh, hit the bell so that you're notified every time a new episode goes live. I'll look forward to hanging out again with you sometime soon. And until then, have a good one.